Hello and thank you for watching this video. My name is Robert and today I'll be talking about WireGuard, a state-of-the-art network protocol and a VPN tunnel, which is free and open source. It is incorporated by default in Linux kernel. It is also available on Android, Windows, macOS, BSD and other systems. I am not affiliated with WireGuard in any way, I just use it in my personal laboratory to securely connect different local and remote devices to my network. WireGuard is simpler, more secure, and more performant than OpenVPN. Also, it has much lower source code footprint than OpenVPN. WireGuard is based on peer-to-peer -peer architecture and UDP-based network traffic. I will present how to install and configure WireGuard on a remote Linux host to securely join a site over the Internet. For the purpose of this exercise, I'll start with some initial assumptions I'll make. I will assume that on the internet, there is an already configured site, which will be your peer to which you would like to connect, like to be able to ping over the secure tunnel or to be able to use uh, services um, provided by the remote site over the tunnel. As a new client to connect to a pre-existing WireGuard VPN, I will use a Linux host in the cloud, which I created temporarily for the tutorial. From the network point of view, we will leverage private subnet 192.168.66.x slash 24 sizer, which corresponds to 256 hosts network. High level steps to start your journey with WireGuard are following. The WireGuard package needs to be installed. You need to create uh, the key pair, which consists of private and public key. Also, you will need to create uh, a configuration file on your client and put there some basic information about your peer, including its uh, uh, private key, uh, also the subnet that should be leveraged. I will show all of this now in the console, in the console. So let's move there without any further ado. Before the video, I created a fresh and uh, generic Fedora server in the cloud. It is available temporarily on this uh, IP address um, in the cloud. So it is Fedora server. However, uh, as I mentioned, uh, WireGuard is available um, on many operating systems, uh, obviously on most uh, Linux distributions. For the purpose of this uh, tutorial, um, I'm using Fedora um, server. Uh, before we start with uh, configuring WireGuard, let's run some basic network uh, commands to see how the network setup looks uh, right now before we start uh, our configuration. So we can see that uh, there are two network interfaces, ETH0 with this uh, public um, IP address and the usual loopback device. Also, let's see how the routing table looks. So there are two entries and uh, both of them refer to ETH0 um, network interface. So what we can do right now is to install WireGuard package, the user space piece, uh, because the kernel space uh, module, uh, it is already there. WireGuard is uh, permanently incorporated into Linux kernel. Uh, for the user space package, its name is WireGuard-Tools. Uh, this is Fedora server. Uh, the latest version, so uh, the package manager is uh, dnf, so I'll start with the command dnf install wireguard-tools. I confirm. And let's inspect this package. You can see that its uh, size is uh, really low, just uh, 390 kilos. 
Um, so, uh, you know, it is a really small package, especially in comparison to OpenVPN. Uh, also, let's see what files actually come with the package. And let's remove everything related to the documentation. So basically, those are all the files. Uh, the configuration goes into slash etc slash wireguard directory, uh, the one which I'll walk you through in a moment. Uh, there are two executables, a wg, which is actually the only binary, and the second one, which is a shell wrapper. Um, also, together with the package, uh, there come two uh, systemd units, which I'll describe also in a moment. Uh, and also, we have there uh, a few helper files for bash completion or the manual um, pages. Uh, also, if we run uh, system ctl list unit files, then we can see that uh, these two uh, units uh, were uh, provided by WireGuard-Tools uh, package and uh, it is disabled um, at the moment. Uh, also, after installing the package, nothing uh, has been changed in terms of network, so no worries, no actions were executed yet. Uh, we have to configure WireGuard first. Um, and now we can run command wg, and uh, I'd like to show you its usage uh, syntax. Uh, as you can see, if we run wg, nothing happens, because we don't have any WireGuard interface yet. So let's work on it to create one. Let's go into slash etc slash WireGuard. Uh, and now uh, we need to create uh, a WireGuard private key. Uh, WireGuard leverages uh, state-of-the-art cryptography much better than OpenVPN. Uh, it is uh, um, public key-based uh, cryptography, so we need to generate the key, uh, the, the private key, the subcommand is gen key. So wg space uh, gen key. If we run it like this, then uh, in the output a new random key is created. Uh, so let's create a new random one and let's put it in my dash dot key. Uh, this is a good point. I should have executed umask first. So let me remove it. And uh, let's generate once again. Uh, the complaint here about um, you mask was that uh, by default on Perdora it was uh, apparently 0.22, so the file created in um, in my first attempt it was world readable. Um, anyway, the dire directory was not. Uh, um, however, I changed it here, so you mask 0.77. So now the file created is uh, not readable by the group nor by by the world. Uh, now, from the private key, we can uh, derive the public key. So, wg uh, pub key, uh, running it like this, will uh, make the command to wait for the private key on the standard input. So, we can um, input the content of uh, the file that we've just generated. And this is the public key. If we will run it multiple times, then obviously it will be the same output because the input key, the private key is the same each time. Let's save it into my-pub.key. And now uh, let's create uh, the configuration file. Uh, and uh, here let me tell you about the naming convention in WireGuard and in wg-quick. Um, shell wrapper. Uh, the naming convention is that uh, the network interfaces are typically called WG and the number starting from zero. So uh, WG0, WG1, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, this is a good practice to follow this convention, so I'll do the same. Uh, so I'll uh, call this file wg0.com. 
Then, uh, if I run uh, wg quick um, later on, then it will recognize it and it will uh, take the configuration from there. Uh, the configuration file is uh, really simple. There um, need to be two sections. One section is uh, interface and the second section is peer. Uh, the variable necessary here in this section is private key and we can paste the content of uh, the file that we've just generated, my dash brief dot key. Uh, alternatively, if uh, you were concerned about uh, disclosing the private key directly in the configuration file, uh, also it would be possible to use uh, pre up command. And here you would be able to run sub command to unvault the private key uh, from some uh, secrets uh, management uh, tool, like uh, let's say to decrypt uh, GPG encrypted uh, file uh, with pre uh, key. So something like this would work. Um, anyway, not to overcomplicate uh, this tutorial, uh, I will put the private key directly here. So I will read it uh, from my brief.key file. Okay, so now under interface, we also need to specify the static address that uh, this uh, uh, panel end, this peer, uh, this uh, local machine will have. I mean the machine running in the cloud VM that I'm working on right now. So as discussed in the beginning, it will be 192.168.66, which is uh, our subnet. Uh, and uh, here, let me um, randomly uh, choose some um, exact uh, IP address. Let's say, let me take uh, 59 uh, slash 32 to specify exactly this uh, IP address. And a little remark here about um, um, IP addressing uh, in uh, WireGuard. Uh, so here in this example, I use a static IP address. Um, as you know, there is a service uh, DHPC for uh, providing IP addresses dynamically. However, uh, there are some strong complexities uh, over using DHCP with uh, WireGuard tunnels. Uh, I won't be covering this topic in this video. So for now, let's make it simple and let me uh, continue with this uh, um, static uh, IP address in this uh, private subnet. So let's move on to populating the peer section. Here I need to put public key equals and here I need to put the public key of my peer of the remote side of the tunnel and to know it to get it uh, basically I need to have it uh, from the remote side right so they would need to share it with me so if I have it then I can put it here uh, the remote site in our um, exercise was already pre-configured by me uh, before this uh, before recording this uh, video so let me jump to this remote uh, site and uh, let me copy the public key of that site and let me paste it here uh, basically, the remote site was uh, configured uh, almost exactly the same way that I configure this host uh, here. So the same commands were used. Uh, you know, WireGuard is uh, not client server, but it is uh, purely peer-to-peer -peer architecture. So uh, um, each peer is equal to, to the others, that uh, all of them are simply peers. So I configured the remote site the same way. Okay, so we have the public key of the remote peer specified. Now I need to specify the endpoint. So um, the IP address reachable over the internet 
um, where the remote wire guard listens for incoming um, connection attempts. Uh, for the purpose of this uh, tutorial, I created uh, a temporary host name, so I will put it here, wg-tmp-lab, and it is created in a domain which I own, it is metasolid.tech. Also, it is required to specify um, port number. Uh, normally, the default port number for WireGuard it is uh, uh, 51820. Uh, it is UDP communication only. Uh, however, uh, it is uh, good practice to use uh, non-standard port numbers, um, especially for internet-facing services. Um, security of WireGuard is uh, really good. Nevertheless, uh, I will use something uh, non-standard. Uh, I chose uh, 205. 18. So the remote site, uh, the one which I pre-configured before recording this video, um, it runs on 205.18. So this is what I put uh, here. And now just the last uh, variable we need to put, it is uh, allowed IPs. And here we can specify the subnet that we chose. So 192.168.66.0 slash 24 CIDR. So basically it means that uh, uh, the host will be configured to route all network packages uh, going uh, to addresses in the subnet via our new uh, network interface. So let me write the file. And now we will use wg-quick, the shell wrapper, which simplifies uh, configuring uh, WireGuard interfaces. Its syntax is uh, simple. Uh, the first argument is uh, one of these three. Uh, in our case, we will run wg-quick up. And now in the last argument, uh, we can either specify the exact interface name uh, because we followed the naming convention and we have file wg0.conf in slash etc slash wireguard directory, uh, we can run it like this, which would uh, refer to this syntax, or alternatively, we can provide a path. So dot slash wg0.conf. So let's run it and uh, let's see if it runs fine. Let's check the exit code. It is zero, and uh, those are commands which uh, were executed by the shell wrapper. So a new WG um, interface was added of type WireGuard. The configuration for, from our conf file was applied to this device. Uh, IP address was assigned to WG0. MTU was configured, and lastly, the root was uh, added. So everything, every network packet which is uh, targeted toward this uh, subnet will be routed via WG0. Um, so now we can check again if config minus A. So now we can see that we have three network devices. The new one is WG0 with this uh, um, IP address assigned. Also, let's see the routing table. So there is one new entry, and uh, as I said, everything, every packet targeted to this uh, subnet will be routed via our new device. Also, we can run now WG command, either with show or without any arguments, which will show us some more detail. And uh, here, just uh, bear with me, but uh, not necessarily I like to share my public IP address with you guys. Uh, so that's why I'll filter this to remove uh, IP address of mine.
just to make sure if there are no mistakes here. Let me compare with my notes. Should be fine. Cool. So it is fine. Yes. Uh, so this is the output of uh, wg command, just with uh, the public endpoint address removed, right? Uh, okay, so this is the interface, the private key is uh, hidden, um, listening port, uh, it was auto-assigned, uh, this is the local end listening port. We haven't specified it explicitly, so it was uh, chosen uh, randomly. Um, and this is the public key, right? We can compare with my-pub. Yes, it is the same. Okay, and uh, now what I need to do uh, to make sure that uh, this uh, um, new client will be allowed to connect uh, to the remote site, I need to copy this uh, public key and to enter it uh, on the remote side, WireGuard, right? So on my second screen, let me log in there. FYI, on the remote side, um, I'm using OpenWRT. So I do it in WebGUI, in Lucy. So I go to the WebGUI there and uh, I need to copy this uh, public key of our client. I paste it there. And I click Save and Apply. It has been saved. And now in OpenWRT, I need to go to Network, Interfaces, and I need to restart this uh, WireGuard interface um, on the remote side. Uh, on the remote side, I have uh, a couple WireGuard devices, so uh, I have a new one specifically for this um, video, for this lab exercise. So I restart this uh, dedicated uh, WireGuard interface on the remote side. and we'll run some tests in just a moment. Okay, now the remote site is uh, configured with the same subnet, uh, 66 slash 24, and also the remote site is configured that uh, the WireGuard uh, device there, its IP address is 192.168.66.1. So if uh, the setup works, then I should be able, for example, to ping that uh, IP address, uh, neglecting all firewall related stuff, which uh, we'll cover later on separately. But now let's put firewall stuff completely aside. Also on this uh, uh, Fedora server installation, uh, there is no firewall uh, package installed at all. Uh, there is uh, no IP tables, no NF tables, uh, nothing firewall related. So simply it is uh, all opened uh, for the you know demo purpose. Let's try to ping 192.168.66.1 and let's see if it works. If it doesn't, then we'll troubleshoot. Cool, it works. It works. I'm surprised that it worked. Uh, typically, you know, in the, in the demos, some things may break all of a sudden. Yeah, um, it worked. So we are able to run ICMP ping toward this device. Um, as you can see, um, network, um, I mean, the, the time of the, the ping is like 40 milliseconds, so definitely it is not local, but it goes over the internet to the remote device. Also, from the other side, I can run TCP dump. So let's let me do it. 
and let's see how it looks. Yes, I can show it to you. It is fine. Yes. OW is uh, the name of the uh, router on the remote site. It is OpenWRT router. Um, so, as you can see, those uh, packets, I can run it again, right? Simply, I run it like this. Um, as you can see on the remote side, the name of the interface is different. It doesn't matter. Um, so, uh, the name is WG1Guest. Uh, I run TCP dump this way. So, if I stop pinging, then the packets flow stops as well. If I start to ping again, then ping works um, again. So, basically, it proves that uh, our setup, our exercise worked, and we are able to ping securely. So, now um, those two devices are in the same um, network. They are connected uh, securely via WireGuard uh, tunnel um, over the internet. Um, so, as I mentioned, I uh, omitted uh, firewall related um, configuration, right? This is a separate topic. Um, you know, um, IP tables um, has been used for almost two decades right now, but the uh, NF tables um, comes into picture uh, and uh, it seems that uh, it is the route to go. Uh, in Fedora, um, the recommended uh, firewall software is uh, NF tables with uh, firewall D. Uh, possibly I'll uh, create a separate video in which I'll cover uh, those uh, packages, how to work with uh, uh, firewall in modern Linux distribution uh, with uh, NF tables, with uh, firewall D. Um, anyway, long story short, uh, to enable firewall for WireGuard, it is uh, not a hard thing because uh, if we have this new network interface, then it would be really simple to enable firewall basically you would be able to run something like uh, IP tables, uh, let's say, uh, to append to input table and to specify um, the input interface like WG0 and the, the rule here, right? So this way you can specify your typical rules, you know, to block everything incoming, which is uh, not explicitly allowed and not related to already established connections. For example, a very typical uh, firewall configuration, right? So, uh, if you need a firewall uh, between your hosts in WireGuard tunnel, uh, this is the way to, to do it. Uh, if you would like to know more, then uh, I can record a separate video on this uh, um, on this topic. So, that's all I wanted to show you uh, today. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope it was useful. If you have any comments, uh, please uh, give me a shout. Uh, I highly appreciate all your feedback. Uh, also, you can subscribe to my channel. Uh, possibly I'll be covering a lot more tech stuff or some other topics like uh, perhaps uh, cybersecurity, some uh, science-related uh, topics, uh, open source software, possibly some topics revolving around quantum computing, self-hosting, automation. Uh, so, please, let's stay in touch. So, guys, uh, take care and uh, I'll see you next time.